these young children have no country over the circumstances that has befallen them. It is not a life they desire. They yearn to be in school learning with their contemporaries. But here they are in this helpless condition. According to UN reports, we have close to 20 million out of school children in Nigeria. That translates into one out of five out of school children in the world is a Nigerian. And it is alarming. Invariably, these ones are going to grow up into uneducated children, which is not really good for the country. If we have so many children out of school, there is very little development that can take place in the nation. So there is a need to bring them back into school, both formal, structured school and informal school. Education is a child's right and the bedrock of any society that must be acquired in a serene and conducive atmosphere. To put it straight, it's the fundamental right of every child to be educated, as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. But sadly enough, the reverse is the case in most African societies. It is an index sign of a failed society to see young vulnerable out-of-school children on the streets hawking and involved in all sorts of child labor, leaving them to a hopeless future and a time bomb waiting to consume the society on the long run. We have to ask ourselves, why are they out of school? Is it because the parents don't have money? Is it because the parents don't want to send them to school? Is it because they don't even believe there's any value in education? So. All those questions are things that we're trying to answer as we're moving from market to market to discuss with them. Because every part of the country will need to design a suitable system to address the question of out-of-school children. For the number of children that are out of school, it is of great concern to us. And we are looking at ways in which the problems that are keeping them out of school can be sorted out so that these children can remain in school. Since 2015, Concerned Parents and Educators Initiative has been striving to transform Nigeria's education sector. With its branches spread across 21 states of the Federation, the advocacy has been taken around different communities to create awareness and inspire development in education at all levels for national growth. Concerned parents and educators, we are a group of people concerned about the state of the education sector. And we have decided that we will not just talk about the problems. We want to take ownership of the problems. We want to see what we can do. Because problems can only be solved if they are owned. And we want to be able to say that this is what we are doing concerning the education sector. We've been running an advocacy for the transformation of the education sector. We've done speak out, we've done video challenge, we've been, our people have been speaking in churches, they've been speaking in mosques, they've been speaking in community centers all over the country. And apart from that, even before this advocacy program, we've done so many things on CPE. We've done teachers appreciation program, we've done support for cerebral palsy children, we've done uh, leadership seminars, we've done parenting seminars, we've done widow uh, scholarship support scheme for wi uh, children of widows. And you could see some of those people that we're even supporting that came in now. People in local schools, where we've done quite a lot of things within the education sector. As a measure to further raise the standard of education in Nigeria, Concerned Parents and Educators Initiative organized the Safe Education Dialogue for stakeholders in the education sector. The dialogue is to address issues affecting the education of these future leaders. In their presentations, Resource persons discuss topics related to systemic and strategic improvement of the education sector. Children can sit with their mother and explain who they are capable of becoming and why they need our support. Have a pre parenting program before the child gets to school. That's also where parents sign an undertaking that they will not come and do disrupt the school or bully the teachers and what most times when we talk about the teaching profession, everybody talks about school, everybody talks about classroom. We need to move beyond that and look ahead. We need to enforce continued education. 
Um, in Nigeria today, we need to begin to embrace that, that learning is not something about a, a consummation or a destination. It's actually a continuation, it's a continuum. And so we need to begin to showcase the good stories that happen but they are hidden in the country. Curriculum. Simple. What do I teach? How do I teach it? When do I teach it? Where do I teach it? That's what all curriculum is. These are the questions that the curriculum should answer. A society is as good as the curriculum that it has. Curriculum, we must have a curriculum that is relevant. They teach us in the university, it's called worthwhileness. Is our curriculum worthwhile? Let's make it worthwhile. Is our curriculum relevant to our society? Let's make it relevant. Can we connect the what we want to teach to the how we want to teach it, to the where we teach it? That's the way to make the curriculum serve the society. Do we have feedback? Do we have doctors involved? Without imposition, the children were engaged on how best they would love to learn. I like to hear learn while learning, but I think it's not so possible in most schools. Why? Because during teaching or when the teacher is talking, you see distraction. I like to learn with teachers that push their students to do things like you don't just wait for the students to push them, you make sure they do it. I would like to learn in a quiet place. I feel honored. I feel that my school has really done a lot by giving us the ability to be able to um, come to this location because I've been able to learn so many things. I've been able to meet different people that have gone through a lot in life and they are able to impact on us children. It was really nice of the convener yeah, because um, he or she was able to consider um, the situation and understand that it really needs to be looked into and he or she was able to um, got pool resources together to make such a fine event like this. Today's event has left me in a reflective mode. It's a call to action for everyone for us to work on the, to improve the educational sector. It's just the beginning of the beginning and we hope that a lot more will come out from this. When we have a better learning environment, students will learn better. All sectors of the economy will be well attended to and Nigeria will grow. The state of insecurity we would not have to be dealing with the kind of issues we're dealing with in Nigeria. We'll begin to think of bigger and greater things to make our country better. Talking about education, we have formal informal education as well. There are some trainings they give you at home that has to do with informal education. What you have to do, what you should not do, they are all training. We are in the 21st century, but all these values in our culture are still very relevant. And what we have to do now is that there are a lot of influences from outside the country, like from the developed country. Many of our children imbibe this culture. Nevertheless, parents should not lose focus. That pick the good ones from that culture and combine it with what we are taught here to be upright, to be honest, to be hardworking and so forth. I'm happy we've taken the uh, bull by the horns. Some people have started an initiative. It's like a rolling stone. We will get more people on board as we're going along. At least we have the awareness now. People are more aware than now. People are more putting thoughts behind education. And people are speaking up. Parents, students, teachers, administrators. It's a, it's a collective action. Life 
owes us nothing as individuals in the real sense, but nature has placed a moral burden on each and everyone to live a meaningful life by impacting on others in making life a lot less difficult to live in. As CPE plans to lift the hands of those future leaders beyond limits, they urge corporate organizations to key into life impacting initiative of this kind and urge the government to make education a priority for a life better to all and sundry. Education certainly makes life better. We can do it. We can do it. We can make this country better. We can make things to work. All of us just need to have a genuine heart and a desire to get things done. Leadership is about making lives better. If you're not making the lives of people better, then you need to reconsider your position. It's not about the position. It's about improving lives. It's about caring about people. You can't lead people you don't care about. You must care about us. You must seek ways of making our lives to improve. That's where you can say you are leading us. Lagos State is, is on the verge of getting it right because we have somebody with a reformer's heart set at the helm of affairs. I pray that we will have many more corporate organizations support us. It's a laudable project. Let us support us. Let us take education around the country. I believe that if people are educated, things are going to be better for this country.